the question is now asking us to find the width of the interference fringes, the width of the diffraction central maximum fringe, and then the width of the slits and the separation of the slits. Remember what the question gives us at the beginning. Let's go back here to the beginning. It tells us that the overall width of the graph is 10 millimeters. So from here to here is 10 millimeters. It also tells us that the wavelength of light is 500 nanometers and L, the distance from screen to slits, is 2 meters. Okay, let's go back to the question. So this tells us that from here to here is 10 millimeters. So to find the width of the fringes, we just have to count how many of these fringes we have. What I did, for example, I drew these yellow arrows to easy the count. For example, here, this yellow one comes, starts at the middle of this one. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten of them. So we keep counting. That's 10 for that one, 10 for this one, 10 for this one, 30, and there is another one left there. So 31 fringes, so 30, uh, 31 fringes occupy 10 millimeters. So the width of the fringes, delta Y, is 10 millimeters over 31, or 0.32 millimeters. Now, the second question is asking us the width of the central diffraction maximum. The central diffraction maximum is, I added the red arrows here, is what's between the red arrows. Uh, so we just have to measure that using the scale. It is really the width of this yellow arrow here in the middle plus probably one, two, three fringes, something like that. Uh, so it's about 13 fringes wide. 13 fringes wide, we measured the width of interference fringes before, so we just multiply 13 by that width and we get that. It's, it does not matter how you do it, you just um, use the scale that's given, the overall distance here is 10 millimeters, use that to figure out the distance separating the red arrows. Now, if we were asked to find the width of other fringes, that uh, other diffraction fringes, there would be half of this fringe. Instead of 4.2, it would be 2.1 millimeters, half of that. And we can also measure it, that's the separation between the blue one here and the red one. This is the first diffraction minimum, this is the second one. So that's the width of the second diffraction fringe. Third part of the question is asking us about the width of the slits. Now to do that, remember we just have calculated the width of the central maximum. So we use the expression that we have for the width of the central diffraction maximum, which is delta y twice lambda l over a. Twice for the central maximum, remember. So we solve for a here. So A is going to be twice lambda L over delta Y. Just plug it in. So in this case, we found a width of 476 micrometers. Part four of the question is asking us what is the separation of the slits? What is the separation of the slits? Now for the separation of the slits, we follow the same method. We have the width of the fringes here due to interference. Remember, separation of slits. Whenever we have two slits, is interference we talk about. Whenever we have a, a single slit or slit width, we are talking of diffraction. So here they are talking us of separation of slits. So interference. The width of the interference fringes, we found them here, 0.32 millimeters. The expression for the width of interference fringes is lambda L over D, so we use that expression to find D. Now, the last question is asking us about the position of the third order interference 
maximum relative to the central maximum. Now, that one, we just use the equation for the various maxima. The expression is y sub n is n lambda l over t. So, for the third order maximum, we use 3 for n. So, y sub 3 is 3 lambda l over t. We just plug in the numbers. Remember here, I was just making the calculation easier. Since we know what lambda l over t is, it's just three times that. Now, the question is asking, the second question, how would the position of the third order interference maximum change if we increase the number of slits to five? Now, the interference maxima, their position does not depend on the number of slits. Okay, their shape, you know, how wide, how spread out they are, depends on the number of slits, but not their position. So, the answer is, so whenever we have two slits or more, if everything else is the same, the only difference is the number of slits. The position of the principal maxima, right once here, is going to be the same irrelevant of the number of slits. That's the answer of number two. Now question three, how would the position of the third order interference maximum change if we increase the wavelength from 500 to 700, like going from green to red. Now here, there's going to be a change. Because remember, y3 is 3 lambda L over t. So increasing the wavelength, that's changing lambda. So that's increasing, making the position of the third order maximum further out. Okay, so we can calculate that. 